My name is Matt. I'm a former resident here at Enders Island. I was asked to come and speak tonight to tell a little bit of my story and how Enders Island saved my life. I will first tell you a little about my experience while I was drinking and drugging, about the strengths I found in recovery which started at Enders, and the overwhelming sense of hope and gratitude I have for moving into the future. I drank and I did drugs because I thought it was the only thing I was good at. I drank alone, I drank with other people, I used drugs before school, after school. At first it was fun and a harmless part of growing up, however it eventually became unhealthy. It became an, obses an obsession <clears throat> and after that an addiction. Sparing the details, I will assure you I am well aware of what we refer to in the rooms of recovery as incomprehensible demoralization. What it feels like to be in a hospital bed, chained to a stranger in a prison bus, being woken up by EMS personnel after having a seizure. Everything that led me to the desperation that is required for an alcoholic to really quit for good. When I came to Enders Island in 2013, I was 22 years old. My dad had been contacted by a man who was in the Coast Guard that invited him to come to the island for an axe retreat, which stands for adoration, catechism, theology, and sacraments. <clears throat> After the age of 12, I hadn't had much experience with religion or God, but I can tell you that I always had respect for it. I always had the reservation inside that God could save me in my situation, but that I wasn't worth being saved. The only way I know how to explain it is when I first came to Enders Island, it was like the first time I had peace in my heart in my whole life. I suddenly felt like it was possible for me to live a normal life, and I realized that there were people out there who knew what it was like to struggle and to overcome. As I felt God's grace on the island, I came clean about my struggle, and I was given an opportunity to stay at the island. What I also attribute to God is the that I had the courage to pursue it. I called Father Tom every day for a week until he invited me to come to the island. My father, him and I sat inside the main house and he asked me how much I was drinking. I told him I was having a six pack every day, which wasn't true, it was a little more. But one of the things that he told you, and what is true is I told him that I was willing to do whatever it took to come to the island and feel the peace that I first felt when I came here. So he told me I need to go to rehab. So after finishing a 45 day rehab in West Texas, I lived on the island from August of 2013 to August of 2014, strengthening my foundation in sobriety. In my year living on Enders Island, I was able to start to recreate myself, to rebuild my self esteem and to rediscover what was possible for me. I helped out in an equine therapy barn where I worked with kids with intellectual disabilities. I went to a community college and finished a semester of classes without getting arrested or ending up in the hospital. I went to recovery meetings nightly and mass daily. I spent a lot of time learning to pray and to be honest with myself and to be honest with God. I met some of the most incredible families in the world and people who had things that I wanted. I met people of faith from all walks of life, nuns, priests, seminarians, and people who were interested in the island like yourselves. From Enders Island, I applied to the Center for the Study of Addiction and Recovery at Texas Tech. The center offers scholarships to students in recovery, which made it possible for me to get into and through nursing school at a large, reputable institution. They offer free coffee, and it was also a safe place for people like myself in recovery to navigate through a uh, modern college campus. In regards to my college experience, to so many people just going to a college football game in solidarity with their peers is a normal life activity. It's fun, but it's nothing special. For me, it was nothing short, nothing short of a gift just to be able to be there, and I went to every single game. I became active in the recovery community and took a position as the Alcohol Awareness and Education Chairperson in a service organization. I traveled to local high schools and retention classes on campus to teach people about what happens when you go too far with drugs and alcohol 
and to spread a message of resilience and the importance of talking to someone responsible if you need help. I started to work as a student liaison at the center soon after and then took another job working nights at the rehab center where I got sober. Also when I got to Texas I became a member of the Catholic Student Center. I took the RCIA classes which were required to, con to convert to uh, Catholicism and I became an official confirmed Catholic in 2015. This being my story, I must include how I met my wife. I had gone to Texas and had gotten really involved in the Catholic Student Center and even found a group of students who were interested in getting together every night to pray. We had keys to the university chapel and we would go in and pray in front of the tabernacle. They taught me how to pray and how to sing the Chapel of Divine Mercy. While we got together every night, I made my intention for this time of prayer to becoming a better man. After I finished my novena a few days later, as I was reminded by the priest who married us, I met the woman who was meant to help me to do that. Her name is Paola, and she's sitting right there. Please wave and say hi. <clears throat> we got married in the church on June 2nd, 2018 in Guatemala City, and it was the best day of my life. I'm told the only next best thing will be when we have children. We're going to try to wait, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> I'll have two anniversaries in June because on June 27th, I will have five years sober also. I graduated Texas Tech magna cum laude with a bachelor in science of nursing. Regardless of my tumultuous past, by God's grace, I was able to become a registered nurse in the state of Texas. And on Thursday, I accepted a job working at Methodist Dallas in a med surge floor. So happy. Nursing has been more rewarding than I could imagine so far. And in, in, in working with people who are sick every day, it reminds me of one thing. Everyone gets sick sometimes. High blood pressure, diabetes, stroke, cancer addiction, alcoholism, every family deals with illness. This is one of the truths I finally understood when I was on Ender's Island. I learned that everybody is human and every human is not without fault. And this was invaluable to me. I spent so much time in my addiction thinking I was a bad person for just the way I felt. I built my life around what I thought I was, which was a bad person. If it wasn't for Ender's Island, and the people who surround it that taught me no matter what I thought or how I felt, I was still deserving of forgiveness and mercy. I can promise you I would be dead or in jail today. Into the future, I hope to continue to grow in this new life and try to give back. I live life one day at a time, one challenge and one blessing at a time. Thank you all so much for coming out tonight and for hearing a little about my experience here on the island. Whether you know much about addiction or recovery or not, by being here, you have made an incredible impact on my life and the life of all the other young men like myself who end up making their way across the causeway. Thank you all for your time. I truly look up to everyone here. Thank you, Father Tom. My dad's in the room. Thank you, Dad. Father Tom, happy Father's Day.